people of the internet, Michelle J. Stenson here of Chartreuse Flower Works. Welcome to an episode of Coffee Talk. Thank you for coming. So I've been talking a lot about my pine cone bird feeders, yada, 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 pine cone this, pine cone that. And I finally have made them. And by me, I mean Michaela and her friend Nicole have made these for me. I know it seems a little weird that there's two types of ribbon. But this ribbon up here is what you use to hang your pine cone from a tree or something. Uh, so these are a great gift for somebody who already has everything. It's a gift that's an actual ongoing experience. So I have 10 of these available right now. I'm making room in my freezer upstairs because my cooler isn't super, super, super cool. Uh, so I'm actually gonna take some of them upstairs, put them in my freezer, and then as I sell them, I'll bring them back down. So even if you want one of these for Christmas, if you buy it now, you can just pop it in your freezer and it'll be good until you give it as a gift. This is really a good gift for someone who has everyone, everything, which I think I mentioned, especially considering that everybody became professional birders over COVID. Everyone's into birds now and gardening and everything. And I'll tell you something else. The plant people, I can't find any pots to buy. There's literally no pots. Every pot I try and add to my shopping cart from my suppliers is sold out. It's insane. So... Um, yeah, so these are a really good gift. So I have those available. I'll put this friend down over here. There. Okay. All right. So speaking of an ongoing experience of a gift, the other thing that I have in now is uh, some amaryllis. So this is what they look like. They're a big trumpet flower. And they grow from a giant bulb as well. Like the bulb is like this big. And the flowers generally come out before the leaves do. So this is a flower here and there's another one in here. Once these get going, they can grow up to an inch a day. And when I was working with the Boys and Girls Club and I had my own classroom and my own club at Holy Family School, I brought one of these in and we put our own ruler with it, like a big cardboard piece. And every day when the kids came in, we had to measure the amaryllis to see how fast it had grown since the day before. So this is a really good interactive gift that will bring ongoing, ongoing joy. Um, so I have those available. The other seasonal plant that I have is the fabulous Christmas cactus. So the thing about Christmas cacti, Christmas cactus, Christmas cacti, is that this is a family heirloom plant. I know that sounds weird, but I don't know how many people over the course of my career that I have heard say to me, I have my grandmother's plant, it's 50 years old, it's 60 years old, it's 100 years old. So this is a generational family heirloom plant that you can keep and grow on and then pass down to other generations to come. So they're really beautiful and it is a cacti but it's a forest type cacti so it does need a little bit more water than a regular spiky cacti would um, and the flowers are absolutely beautiful and I do really love how many stories I've heard about this multi-generational plant. Um, also, uh, my pine cone situation, I meant to show off this leucodendron. So this is really hard for a flower. Like, how is that possible? So this is a leucodendron. It is a product out of Africa and um, it actually opens up and it's so hard and so beautiful. I love using things like this for Christmas because um, it's something that people haven't seen. And also I like to use things in my arrangements that will last for like a really, really long time. So the only thing about these is that they're pretty expensive. So this whole thing I have to sell for $6, but it's epic. The other thing I have is its cousin, the Protea. So you can see the structure is very, very similar. Um, so this is actually the national flower of South Africa. It's spiky, but it's actually pretty soft and it's really, really heavy. So that's a protea. And then, you know, I like to talk about flower science. I have some clematis here. So this has only come out in the last couple of years on the cut flower trade. Um, 
you know, it grows like in your garden and it grows crazy, but they have like genetically bred these so that they have a really long, straight, usable stem for us florists to enjoy. Uh, so those are really beautiful. And then the other thing is, this is called chocolate Queen Anne's Lace. So Queen Anne's Lace traditionally just comes in white and over the last couple of years, they have put out this color, uh, which is a really cool thing. Um, also, I have to remind everybody to subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up. If you leave a comment, that's really helpful. And also, if you want to know when my new videos are coming out, if you hit the notification bell, then you'll get an update about that. If you're watching this video from Facebook and you try and do that and then you get a message that says sign in, it's because you're being asked to sign into YouTube. And if you do not have a YouTube account, you cannot do all those things that I just asked you to do. But that's okay because you can still watch my videos and you can share them on Facebook as well. Um, and that's really helpful for me also. So there's that. The next thing I have to show today is a stem of cotton. It's so bizarre that something so soft grows on such a hard wooden stem. And these do have sharp things in them. There's like a little point right there. And it's really sharp. So that is how cotton grows. That's what it looks like. And um, one thing that you can do that's really fun is you can color the cotton with uh, eyeshadow or blush or something if you want it to be a different color. You could paint it too, but I like to use the, the makeup because then it looks like really kind of like flossy and like cotton candy like. I just like the way that it looks, so. I don't have paint to show you today, but I did grab my brushes so I can, <clears throat> excuse me, so I can show those off again. So this is the flat top brush. So this is the one cent flat top because it's the size of a penny at the end. And this is really good for stenciling and also getting into hard to reach places. And then this is the French tip, which again is really good for getting into hard to reach places. Then I have the dusty here, which is amazing for blending uh, different colors together. And then I have the traditional brushes, the traditional chalk painting brushes. So. So you want to use these because they minimize brush strokes and also they have a lot of paint holding ability. So you don't waste that much paint because they put a lot of the paint gets like stuck in there and it just does a really good job distributing the paint. So that's why you want these. And these are actually made in Italy and I have two drawers full of them as well. Um, also, I'm still uh, collecting people for my newsletter, so if you are interested in getting a newsletter in the mail from me, then you need to send me your address. You can just send it to any inboxes you find, or else there's also a link in the description of the video, which is a link to the Survey Monkey uh, survey, in which you just give me your address. It's just a one question survey. So. So yeah, that's what's happening. It's uh, Saturday and I'm open till five today. I have a lot of evergreens. I have beautiful local ilex berries and I've got the big pine cones. I have some that I haven't put, put the bird feeder situation on as well if you want some for your planters. And I'm waiting for my candle wax to come in and um, yeah, that's what's happening. So I guess I will upload this video and you're gonna to remember to subscribe and all of those other things that I always say repeatedly. And um, I hope everyone has a great day and I will check back in. Check back in.